Hello Biology 1! Now that you've finished reading through your first section of your textbook, I wanted to provide you with a short recap. This is kind of like a, a mini lecture. If I were to give you this information in a lecture form, what are the main points I would be trying to emphasize? So what you should be taking away so far is what is biology? Just first off, um, biology is the scientific study of life. And you might wonder, well, what do we mean by a scientific study? We'll get to that a little bit later. We haven't gotten there yet. Um, let's focus on the, on the other part, scientific study of life. So what do we mean by, by life? What is a living thing? It turns out uh, we recognize living things mainly by what they do. And so there are a number of, of things that we can, can recognize as um, being like properties of life. Let's just list them out. Um, so living things are ordered. They have an order to them. They are very highly organized. Um, the organization, we're going to be talking a lot about cells. Living things are built from cells. And um, what are cells built from? Well, they're built from molecules, really. And then what are molecules built from? They're built from atoms. So there's this whole hierarchy of organization in living things. Um, Another thing that living things all have in common is that they can respond to their environment. So you can think about this in your own life, right? If you're if you're outside and you start to get too warm, what will you do? Maybe you'll move to the shade. You're responding to your environment. Plants do uh, do this as well. Plants respond to their environment. They bend toward the light so that they can do more photosynthesis. So different living things might respond in, in different ways. Um, but there is a response to the environment. Another thing that living things do is they can reproduce. This is true of individual cells and it's true of entire organisms. Um, before living things die, they are capable of reproducing and passing on their DNA to offspring. Moving down the list, adaptation and evolution, I'm going to merge those two together. Organisms tend to be very suited to their environment. A good example of this is um, if you think of a, a hummingbird or even um, a moth, something that um, drinks nectar from a flower. You know, the moth's tongue is really long. It's long enough to be able to go down the flower that is in its environment. If that moth's tongue was too short, it wouldn't be able to get the nectar that it needs. So there's an adaptation there. The moth is adapted to its environment. Um, okay, growth and development. Living things can grow throughout their lifetimes. They go through different stages. The way that that happens is through the expression of genes, which are encoded in DNA. We'll get to that in more detail coming up in a later chapter. A um, couple more. Regulation or homeostasis. Homeostasis might be a new word for you, but what this is just referring to is the fact that living things can regulate their internal conditions. So um, in our own bodies, we're able to maintain our temperature pretty constant. The temperature is kind of a, a familiar example to use. If it gets hot in the room, um, you might start sweating, and that's your body's response to help keep your temperature constant. So homeostasis is being maintained in that instance. Energy processing. All living things require energy to do what they do. And ultimately, um, that energy comes from the sun, so plants can capture the sunlight's energy. And then um, things like animals or, or people, um, we can eat those plants and sort of take the energy in that way. Um, so energy comes in different forms. We'll be talking about that a little bit later on. Um, but all living things require energy and they're capable of processing that energy for metabolism, for being able to carry out different chemical reactions in the body. Another takeaway, so those were how we recognize living things. Those are properties of living things we just finished. Um, another takeaway is that life is extremely diverse and there are many different branches of biology um, that deal with this diversity. One branch of biology is taxonomy. Taxonomy is the branch of biology that deals with naming and classifying all these different species, all this different diversity that we have in living things. Um, so you should know a few examples of different fields in biology. Taxonomy would be one of them. All right, uh, another thing I'd like to just 
plant the idea for right now. I don't think our chapter one talks about this a whole lot, but I'd like to just mention it because it's going to come up later on. Um, another thing is just kind of going along with taxonomy. Life is arranged into different categories. We have arranged, uh, arranged living things into different categories. And the three biggest categories, these are called domains. The three domains of life are as follows. We've got Bacteria, those are very small cells. Usually you need a microscope to see them. Archaea, they are also microscopic cells. They live in really special environments. Um, bacteria and archaea, those are the first two domains. Those are both examples of prokaryotes. And in the chapters coming up, we're gonna be talking about prokaryotes versus eukaryotes. So I just kind of wanna start using these words so that you start hearing them and becoming a little bit familiar with them. These are new words for right now. Um, so, okay, bacteria, archaea, these are both types of prokaryotes. And then the third domain of life are the eukarya. Eukaryotic cells um, have a different structure inside and Usually eukaryotic organisms are multicellular. Animals fit in this group. Our cells are all eukaryotic. So um, again, we'll come back to these words later on. This is just your first introduction to them right here. So I'll talk to you more later.